seamless blue screens there again. Prince is trying to get some help from the maid. Good luck with that. Calm down, I'm sure someone knows who she is, but I don't. Why is this maid's problem, man? Someone like you, someone who loves her. Maybe more than you do. Come, come with me. All these escaping wounded people are such an inconvenience. The role is yours. I don't want it. I said that it's yours. I said. Ironically, that is the exact same exchange between Dario Argento and his daughter when he was casting this movie. I shall be there with you. I hate you. Yes. Well, hate and love are one. You'll get used to me in this way of life. No! No! What you want? The fool Raoul de Chagny. You deserve more than that. Much more. No! Yes! No! Yes! <sighs> of little furry bodies scampering playfully upon my chest. Gotta go to my happy place. Happy place. Uh, oh god, it's going in his pants. Uh, think happy thoughts. Puppies! <coughs> Yay, that's better. Puppies! Oh god, puppy sex! I well, someone's gonna need a rabies shot. Anyway, Christine tries to escape. where his escaping victims are telepathically. If that's the case, why does it take him so damn long to catch anybody? He's sniffing her shoes for her feminine smell. Your female smell. I want to see the sky. Come. Who is he? Is he real? Or does he only exist in that dark corner of your soul? Anyway, Christine escapes and now we have what passes for the Apollo's liar scene. Why does the phantom need to listen in on her anyway? If he's telepathic, he'll already know that she prefers Prince to him. I've never really noticed before, but the phantom has a seriously big nose. His will is my will. And his thoughts are my actions. So if his thoughts are her actions, was he thinking of kissing Raoul? Oh, my little nightingale! Your little what? Where have you been, my dear? We were worried about you. One day you can tell us about it. Come along. Yes, I demand an explanation. Ah, oh, sorry, we haven't much of the movie left. Urgently. 
Christine, you have to rehearse tonight. What? Poor Carlotta, you don't know what happened. What happened? It would take six months to tell you. I can tell it in six seconds. Mama Jack Fonson quick down the chandelier and knocked a big gold ball onto Carlotta's noggin. End of story. Uh, why are the casualties of the chandelier tragedy actually sat down watching the opera? Shouldn't they be in hospital? I would have thought that the opera would be the last place they'd want to be, seeing as they nearly died there last time they went. Oh look, it's the nearly dead rat catcher, I forgot about you. It's you! Huh? I know! She! She's to die! With her virginal look, he's no less than the Phantom's whore! The Phantom's whore! Death to the monsters! Batman! Your entrance was good, his was bad. The difference? Showmanship. This movie after makes me think of better movies. And when that better movie is one of Joel Schumacher's movies, then you know we're in serious trouble. Don't worry, Christine, I'm slowly coming to your rescue. And I am slowly escaping with you. You're too heavy to run with. Must be those boobs. Nice to see that the Phantom's lair is disabled friendly with those handrails and wheelchair ramps. Good for you. Mine. We shall live alone in my world of darkness until death us do part. Thank you, Christine. I've been waiting to do that for the whole movie. She totally went caveman on him. Well, he totally went rat on her, so it's only fair. Gone. You're being a lucky punk. Certainly. Oh, so that's where Gerald Butler got the catering from. <laughs>